Hello, good day everyone. So in this video, I will be talking about fiscal policies and in the next video will be the monetary policies. So first off, let's define what is a fiscal policy. So fiscal policy is the use of government spending and taxes to influence the nation's spending, employment, and price level. So this is merely um, basically an action by our government in influencing the nation's GDP, employment, and price level through the use and adjustment of their own government spending as well as taxes. So in here, we will be talking about discretionary fiscal policy. Discretionary because this is based on the discretion of the government whether to use a particular um, this particular action or the other particular action. So later on, we will learn what are these discretionary fiscal policies. But let's just um, understand first what these discretionary fiscal policies are and where did they come from. So this follows the Keynesian, or oh sorry, Keynesian, because it's Keynes. So Keynesian argument that the government should manipulate aggregate demand in order to influence the output, employment, and price levels in the economy. So if you can still recall, um, we have distinguished the classical versus the Keynesian theory, right? And on um, the classical theory, um, It says that uh, the, go the government interference is not important, while Keynes argued that government intervention is necessary in order to correct imbalances in the economy. So, cunning discretionary fiscal policy, it follows Keynesian argument because it says that the government should manipulate. So, it, there is government intervention. So, this requires new legislation to change either government spending or taxes in order to stabilize the economy. Again, as I have mentioned in the previous slide, this is all about adjustment of um, government spending or taxes, or both, when they put both. Now, um, if you can recall, government spending, this is based actually on a law. So the government cannot spend like mindlessly or indefinitely. There should be a supporting law or legislation that would authorize the government to spend money. So like, for example, every year the Congress will pass um, a General Appropriations Act. So ang GAA mauna siya ang support sa disbursement of funds. So if there will be changes in government spending um, in relation to the government's fiscal policy, then we need a new legislation for that. And if the government opts to change or adjust taxes, taxes are also based on our tax laws. So, for example, um, let's say the corporate income tax of like corporations is 30%, and that is based on the um, National Internal Revenue Code. So, if the government wants to change the rate of tax, then it has to pass a new legislation. So keep in mind that in implementing any changes in the fiscal policy, it will require the passage of new laws or legislation. So here are two classes of discretionary fiscal policies. We have the expansionary and contradictionary fiscal policy. So from the word itself, expansion, uh, expansionary, padakan. So under this, fiscal policy that government is to increase its spending well for contradiction con sorry not contradictionary but contractionary contracts meaning contract so if this is the discretionary discretionary fiscal policy that would be adopted by the government then it follows that the government has to decrease its government spending and then for expansionary fiscal policy here the government has to decrease taxes and for contractionary has to increase taxes. 
So, masabdan raman sad no kay because here, di ba, we want to increase spending, expand or increase spending. If there are lower taxes, kita nga mga consumers um, are more encouraged to buy more. Kay mas gamay naman lang atong mabayran because of the decrease of taxes. Here for contractionary, the government wants to decrease spending. So it might want to increase taxes to discourage the consumers to spend more. Then under expansionary fiscal policy, you could actually make some changes to both the spending and the taxes. So you, you can increase government spending and taxes equally. And same with contractionary, you can decrease government spending and taxes equally. So again, it's really up to the government because this is based on the discretion of the government. So it's up to them whether they would just want to change their spending, either an increase or a decrease in its spending, or put it said taxes only without changing the spending. So it could decrease or increase taxes, or it could change both government spending and taxes equally. So here are the key points that we will be discussing throughout this video. First is the increasing of the government spending to combat a recession. And in here, we will insert the concept of spending multiplier. Or, we put cutting taxes to combat a recession. Here, we will be discussing tax multiplier. And then uh, we will discuss also balanced budget multiplier and uh, lastly, the automatic stabilizers. Okay, first, increasing government spending to combat recession. So again, as I have mentioned, um, here we will also insert the concept of spending multiplier. So this formula can be used to compute the amount of additional government spending required to shift the aggregate demand curve. Again, we have to remember, nga nung kailangan man i-change the government ang ihang spending, particularly to increase. So, to combat recession. So, what happens during recession? Marisha, oh, ang mga consumers are not spending enough. Marag, hinay ang dagan sa atong ekonomiya. That is for recession. So, if the government wants to intervene, it wants to increase spending. That means it wants to shift the aggregate demand curve. Shift the aggregate demand curve. By what? By increasing its own spending. So in order to answer the question, pila man ang increase sa government, how much should the government increase in its spending, then we have to uh, use this formula. So initial change in government spending, aning triangle diri, muna siya ang ato ang um, symbol for change. Change in G or government spending times spending multiplier is equal to change in aggregate demand or total spending. So how to use this formula? So first, step one is to this side, pila atong ganahan na increase in the aggregate demand. So for example, kanis change in aggregate demand, this is the very first thing that we have to decide on. Okay, for us to know, pila ang kailangan na change in government spending. So for example, if you want to change the aggregate demand by 1 million, then this amount, this factor should be 1 million. And then all we need to do is to compute for the spending multiplier and then we will be then ready to um, compute for the amount of change in the government spending. So example, if we want our aggregate demand curve to be shifted to the right by 2 trillion pesos, how much should the initial should be the initial government spending? And let's assume that the value of the spending multiplier is 2. So using the formula I have mentioned a while ago, we have initial government spending times the spending multiplier is equal to change in aggregate demand. So in here, we want to shift our aggregate demand curve to the right 
by 2 million, what does it mean? When we want to change our demand curve to the right, will it entail an increase or decrease in demand? Answer is increase, increase. So this one will be 2 trillion, achieve. And then as given, the spending multiplier is 2. So this is 2. So we can then compute for the initial government spending. So the initial government spending required is 1 trillion, 1 trillion to achieve the change in aggregate demand of 2 trillion. Okay? So that means the I, if more spend, see government of 1 Mil, uh, 1 trillion. The effect is to increase the demand by 2 trillion. So, dili siya equal because here we have the spending multiplier and as given, the spending multiplier is 2. But dili na siya always 2, okay? So, how to compute for the spending multiplier if it is not given? So, here the change in aggregate demand or total spending resulting from the initial change in any component of aggregate expenditures including consumption, investment, government spending, and net exports. So, spending katotanan sa components na to sa GDP, gani, using the expenditure approach. So, consumption, particularly katong mga private consumptions. Then, the investment, government spending, and net exports. I hope you can still recall those things that are included in the GDP under the, ex the expense method or expense approach, expenditure approach. So spending multiplier is equal to 1 over 1 minus MPC. Familiar ba ang MPC? Familiar? No, this is marginal propensity to consume. I remember money sa previous discussion. I hope so. So if we are not given the spending multiplier, we have to use this formula again. That's 1 over 1 minus MPC. Now, 1 minus MPC actually gives you MPS. I remember most MPS. If MPC stands for marginal propensity to consume, MPS is equal to or means marginal propensity to save. Kung nakaremember mo, I hope nakaremember mo, MPC plus MPS is equal to 1, right? So, if ganahan mo shortcut ano yung formula 1 minus MPC, pwede rasad 1 1 over MPS, marginal propensity to save. Okay, 1 minus MPC is equal to MPS. Okay, so either you use this or 1 over MPS will give you the same amount. So in our given here, in our previous example, right, the problem actually gave us the spending multiplier na 2. So if we are to compute the MPC, so, if you want to know, pila man di ay ang MPC, nga, ang gihatag sa ato, ang spending multiplier is 2 man. So, using this formula, 1 over 1 minus MPC, just substitute spending multiplier with its actual value na 2. So, this will be 2 is equal to 1 over 1 minus MPC. Therefore, MPC is equal to 0 0.5. Okay, so what does it mean? So if the government increases its spending by 1 trillion, this means that in the initial round, no, pagpagawas niya sa 1 trillion, right? This is a spending by the government. So the government, let's say the government spends this amount for bridges, national defense, and so on. Then, kinsa man ang nanarbaho ani? No? mga members of the household, right? Sa man, oh, mga members of the household niya, kinsa man ang gi palitan sa mga materials, members of the household would. So, the money that was spent by the government, which is 1 trillion, will be then received by the households as income. So, ang expense sa go government income sa mga nagdawat o swildo o nakadawat sa bayad for the materials. So the households receive this amount of income. 
In the second round, these households spend 500 billion, which is 1 trillion times 0.5. Asa tagikan anin 0.5? Morning marginal propensity to consume. Unsa ganit nang pasabot sa marginal propensity to consume? Mao na ang mao na ang measurement sa pila ang i consume, pila ang spend sa households based sa ilang nadawat nga income. So in our computation, we found out na ang MPC is 0.5. Nya Asa man ang other 0.5, mount siya ang MPS, marginal propensity to save. Therefore, half of it was assumed to be saved by the households. So, wala nilagi spend. Only 500 billion ang ilang spend. So, these households spend the 500 billion, let's say, on houses, cars, groceries, and other products. Nya. Ang kani spending sa households nga 500 billion, di ba, napasa po ni. Napasa dito sa owners sa kaning mga ilang gipamalit. So that is income on their part. Sa katong nagbaligya. So in the third round, the incomes of realtors, auto workers, grew boosted by 500 billion. Katong gikan sa gispend sa households. And since the MPC or the marginal propensity to consume is 0.5, therefore, dili tanan 500 billion ilang gispend balik. Ang other half ana was saved. Only half of the 500 billion was spent. So only 250 billion, so on. Okay. So each round of spending creates income that will then be used for consumption spending in a downward spiral. Nanong downward spiral man, magtikagamay man siya. No, throughout the economy in smaller and smaller amounts until the total level of aggregate demand rises by an extra 2 billion. Two, sorry, 2,000 2, billion or simply 2 trillion. So, atong is show in a table. Again, remember that the initial change in the government spending was 1 trillion. And to express that into billions, let's add three zeros. So, that's 1,000 billions. And then, Ang katong next level of consumption, di ba, half raman because of the marginal propensity to consume na 0 0.5. So, mara siyang 500,000. Uh, sorry, 500 billions rather. Then next round, another half, 250. And then all, um, all others, 125. So, ang total is 2 billion, 2,000 billions or Simply 2 trillion, di ba? Mauna siya ato ang goal ganina nga. 2 trillion ang atong i-change sa aggregate demand curve. And yes, we have achieved that because of the help of our spending multiplier as well as our marginal propensity to consume. Okay? So, sakto da ito ang atong giingon nga. The government spending should be changed by 1 trillion in order to achieve the change in the aggregate demand curve of 2 trillion. Mamta siya to ang goal. 2, two trillion. So if expressed in billions, just add three zeros. Okay. So conclusion. Any change in spending by the government, households, or firms creates a chain reaction of further spending which causes a greater cumulative change in aggregate demand. So, ang isa ka spending, dili ra ka na ra ang impact, but more siya domino effect, no? It will create a chain reaction of further spending, as what we have um, illustrated in the previous slides. Now, let's look at the relationship between these three concepts. The MPC or the marginal propensity to consume, MPS or the marginal propensity to save, and the spending multiplier. Remember again, MPC plus MPS is equal to 1. Is equal to 1. So, if na kay MPC to solve for MPS, so that is 
1 minus MPC. So like here, we have MPC of 0 0.9. To compute for MPS, that's 1 minus 0 0.9. This will give you 0 0.10. Then if you have an MPC of 0 0.8, that's 1 minus 0 0.8. Therefore, MPS is 0 0.2. If you notice, if you add column 1, column 2, equal to 1, gina siya. 0.9 plus 0.1 is equal to 1. 0.8 plus 0.2 is equal to 1. 0.75 plus 0.25 is equal to 1. Okay? Then, for the spending multiplier, remember the formula? For the spending multiplier, that is 1 over 1 minus MPC. Or pwede sa 1 over MPS na lang. So, let's say for this first row, 1 over MPS. MPS is 0.10. So, 1 over 0.10 will give you 10 as spending multiplier. For, this, for the next row, we have MPS of 0.2. So, to compute for the spending multiplier, that is 1. 1 over 0.2, then your spending multiplier will be 5, and so on. So that is the relationship between the MPC, MPS, and the spending multiplier. So try this one on your own doubt. Assume the economy is in a recession and a stimulus package of 800 billion is passed by the government. And so many stimulus package, that is the initial change in government spending. 800 billion. The administration predicts that this measure will provide a 2,400 billion boost to GDP this year. Kung sige ng GDP mo na to ang aggregate demand, di ba? GDP this year. Because consumers will spend their extra cash on HD televisions and other items. For this amount of stimulus, meaning 800 billion, what is the established value of MPC? used in this forecast so you may want to pause this video para um na may time to solve this on your own and then unpause lang if manamo so if your answer is 0 0.67 as mpc your answer is correct next Aside from increasing the government spending, to combat a recession, the government could also cut taxes, cut or decrease taxes. Ano sa ganito effect? If mo decrease ang taxes, if mo decrease ang taxes, then the people or the consumers will be encouraged to spend more. Okay, mas barato naman, kaya gamay na maglang o taxes. So take note, a tax cut has a smaller multiplier effect on aggregate demand than an equal increase in government spending. So, katong increase in government spending, nag ta dito og spending multiplier. For taxes, we have the tax multiplier. And take note, the effect, the multiplier effect as to tax cuts is smaller daw siya, smaller as compared to the increase in government spending. Therefore, for example, di ba ganina, nag-increase ta government spending a 1 trillion. If ever mag Cut ta og taxes by the same amount na 1 trillion sad, ang multiplier effect niya is not the same. Did do ganina. So lahi is siyag effect even though the same siya og amount of change. So let's remember this formula. Change in taxes. So again, kaning triangle. This is our symbol for change. Change in taxes times the tax multiplier is equal to change in aggregate demand. Then, tax multiplier is equal to 1 minus spending multiplier. So, the change in aggregate demand or total spending resulting from an initial change in taxes. So, again, tax multiplier is equal to 1 minus the spending multiplier. So let's compute. The baganina, we increased government spending by 1 trillion. Let's use the same amount to help us appreciate on Saturday ang difference sa effect nila. Even though parihas 
amount of change. So if we cut taxes by 1 trillion, can we achieve our goal? Kato ganina, ang sagito itong goal? To shift the aggregate demand curve rightward by 2 trillion. Okay, so first, let's compute our tax multiplier, okay? Wala man tagi tagaan ng tax multiplier. So in the previous slide, we learned that to compute tax multiplier, simply deduct the spending multiplier from 1. So as given, patong ganina, I hope you can still recall that the spending multiplier is 2. So the tax multiplier is 1 minus 2, therefore that's negative 1. Then, step 2 is to um, use the first formula under this category. So change in taxes times tax multiplier is equal to change in aggregate demand. So Change in taxes, pila ganito, itong ikat sa taxes, 1 trillion, and that is negative. Ikat man, ikat ni mo. So, negative 1 trillion times the tax multiplier nga negative 1. So, times negative 1, so negative times negative is a positive amount. So, negative 1 trillion times negative 1 is equal to 1 trillion, positive 1 trillion. So, unsa man itong answer ani? If we cut taxes by 1 trillion, can we achieve our goal of shifting the aggregate demand curve rightward by 2 trillion? Answer is no, because as what we have found out here, ang 1 trillion na cut in taxes would only impact 1 trillion lang sad sa change in aggregate demand. Dili, wala na to na achieve ang ato ang ganahan nga shift sa aggregate demand curve by 2 trillion. So let's then compare our spending multipliers and tax multipliers. So mamani ganina, di ba, ang at atong table nga present So kung sa government spending ato ang hilabtan, kung mag-increase tag government spending, so na one thousand one thousand billion. This is in billions, di ba, billions. Then because of our MPC, mo na half siya, 500, then another half, 250, 125, and so on. So, if we are to increase our government spending by 1,000 billion or 1 trillion in short, then we can achieve the change in the aggregate demand curve of 2 trillion or 2,000 billions. On the other column here, this is when we decide to cut our taxes by 1 trillion in the same amount, diba? But since we are cutting out taxes, there is no government spending. Igikat raman natong taxes. So this is zero. And then all else remain the same. So that's why uh, the change in the aggregate demand is only 1,000 billion or 1 trillion. So that's the difference between spending multipliers and tax multipliers. Then we have the balanced budget multiplier. The analysis of Keynesian discretionary fiscal policy supposes the government selects a change in either government spending or taxes as a remedy for recession or inflation as the case may be. So, katong ato ang discuss ganina, di ba? Stand alone basis nga. Kung government spending lang ilang hilang government spending rajun. Or taxes, taxes rajun. However, a controversial fiscal policy requires the government to match or balance any new spending with new taxes. So an equal change in government spending and taxes, which changes aggregate demand by the amount of change in government spending. So if na ako no tayo corresponding change in government taxes and, uh, sorry, government spending and taxes, ang shift daw ana sa atong aggregate demand will be equal to our government spending ra. So the cumulative change in aggregate demand is equal to initial change in government spending times spending multiplier plus the initial change in taxes times tax multiplier. Again, paning sa balanced budget multiplier, this is a combination of the change in spending and taxes gi combine na nato. That's why ang kung term there is a change in aggregate demand is cumulative, cumulative change.
So going back to our previous amounts, gigamit sa example, di ba? Here for government spending, that's one trillion times the spending multiplier of two plus our initial change in taxes. So that's one trillion times negative one. This is our um, this is our tax multiplier. So if you add the products of these two equations, you will get one trillion. And this is equivalent to the initial change in the government spending, right? So this supports our theory here, no? Um, equal change in government spending and taxes may change the aggregate demand by only the amount of change in government spending, okay? Thus, regardless of the MPC, the net effect on the economy of an equal initial increase or decrease in government spending taxes is an increase or decrease in aggregate demand equal to the initial increase or decrease in government spending. So this, this time, try this one on your own. Suppose the president proposes an 800 billion economic stimulus package intended to create jobs. A major criticism of this new spending proposal is that it is not matched by a tax increase. Assume the Philippine economy is below full employment and Congress has passed a law requiring that any increase in spending be matched or balanced by an equal increase in taxes. Take note, increase in taxes. The MBC is 0 0.75 and aggregate demand must be increased by 1,000 billion to reach full employment. Will the economy reach full employment if Congress increases spending by 800 billion and increases taxes by the same amount? So please pause the video so that you can solve the um, problem on your own and then unpause once you're done. So an 800 billion increase in government spending increases aggregate demand by 3,200 billion. That is government spending increase times the spending multiplier, where the spending where the spending multiplier is equal to one over one minus MPC. So is equal to one over 0 0.25. So that is four. On the other hand, an 800 billion increase in taxes reduces aggregate demand by 2,400 billion. So to compute that, that's tax cut times tax multiplier, where tax multiplier is equal to 1 minus the spending multiplier. So 1 minus, and since the spending multiplier is 4, then your tax multiplier is negative 3. Thus, the net effect of the spending multiplier and the tax multiplier is an increase in aggregate demand of 800 billion. If you said that the Congress has missed its goal of a 1,000 billion boost in aggregate demand by 200 billion and has not restored full employment, then you are correct. Okay, so that's the end of the video for fiscal policies. Next video will be all about monetary policies.